Kazuma John Kiryu, the mainest of main protagonists from the Yakuza slash Like a Dragon series, has had an immense number of experiences throughout his long life, and I'm here to tell you all about him. It all starts all the way back on the 17th of June 1968 when Mr. and Mrs. John Kiryu, aka Kazuma's parents, gave birth to their beloved son. As the two of them were chilling, minding their own business, a man named Kazuma became so annoyed by the fact that this child had an extremely similar name to him, so he went up to the John Kiryus and proceeded to shoot them in the head and steal their child. As the years have passed, Kazuma with an A had now raised baby Kiryu as one of his own, alongside a fish, some girl that wasn't in Yakuza 0 lol, and probably some other kids that we'll never meet. Inspired by Kazuma with an A's stoicism, Baby Kiryu grew up to become a Yakuza just like him, earning himself the title of John Yakuza from his peers, being obviously based off of his middle name. Skip forward a couple of years and we find ourselves with a 20-year-old Kiryu in the game Yakuza 0. Alongside his mate the fish, the two show that if you don't look like them when you're 20, you're doing something wrong. The two of them spent plenty of time together doing sweet bugger all until Kiryu met a Chinese guy and fought the CEO of boats or something, whatever. Anyway, seven years later we're now as far as the French franchise is concerned where it really started with Yakuza 1 or Kiwami 1. The story this time around starts with the fish accidentally team killing his boss Dojima and Kiryu then proceeds to get banned for it because the fish thought that it'd be funny to make his username Kazuma with a U like a dickhead. After spending 10 years in the joint, Kiryu makes his way back into society and heads right to his favourite bar, Serena. There he meets the fish who was very eager to play a brand new game with his best friend. <laughs> キリュウ組の立ち上げはまだ決まったわけじゃない。組長が決めることだ。組長も嫌とは言えねえよ。風間の親父がもうその気なんだ。光ろう、錦。カモン。ラウンド 1。ファイト。2。being a bit of a sore loser, Akira Nishikiyama blows up the Millennium Tower and thus ends the life of Kazuma John Kiryu. Fortunately, Kiryu was a proactive man and made sure to set his spawn in a bed beforehand, leading us right into the story of Yakuza 2 and Kiwami 2. After experiencing the traumatic death of his best friend, Kiryu decides that now would be the right time to start living a quiet life, so he meets up with an old friend from his 20s, Goro Majima, and he becomes a partner in the Majima Construction Company. The pair had a very successful business, with their most accomplished work being Kamurocho Hills, which serves the sole purpose of being a really big paperweight because the gates are permanently shut and no one is ever allowed to go in there. Unfortunately, their main rivals in the construction industry, the Goryu family, wanted the plot of land that Kamurocho Hills was built on top of. So, rather than seeking a peaceful business deal, the CEO of the Goryu family, Ryuji Goryu, instead decided to try and fight Kiryu to the death on top of Kamurocho Hills. Rather intensely, the man even placed a large explosive on top of the building to further hinder Kiryu and Majima's business. After beating their rival within an inch of his life, Kiryu had to make the decision. Try and stop the bomb from blowing up? or try to save himself and get out of there. Kiryu obviously picked the third option and started making out with the guy's sister right in front of him for whatever reason, and then Ryuji and Kiryu died in the preceding explosion. Fortunately, this is the world of Kingdom Hearts, and so Kiryu finds himself in Yakuza 3 waking up on Destiny Island with Simple and Clean playing in the background, but it's copyrighted, so enjoy the Destiny Island theme song instead. On Destiny Islands, he meets a young girl named Haruka, who tells him of a plight that the islands are facing. Please, Mr. Kiryu, she says. There's some men from the government here, and they want to build an amusement park here on the island. Don't worry, young girl. I will help you. The two embark on a joyous journey filled with lots of fun and lots of laughs. On their journey, they meet the Ryudo family, a group of three individuals who should make another appearance in another game, please, Sega. I just want to know how they're doing. I hope that they're healthy and well. Please, Sega. But anyway, some more hijinks ensue, and Kiryu gets into a fight with the bloody CIA or something, and some psycho Yakuza dude, and then Kiryu gets stabbed and dies. And so, because he was dead, Kiryu does nothing in Yakuza 4. Just kidding. Kiryu didn't die, but he pretty much still did nothing in Yakuza 4. However, the reason for this was very simple. In their holiday time, Majima and Ryuji made amends for their discourse in the past. Together with Kiryu and their financer, the CEO of Sky Finance, Shun Akiyama, the four of them co-starred in an action thriller called Dead Souls. 
The four of them made box office records, sending them a fair bit of cash and having themselves lots of fun. Let's do this again sometime, they all said, as the four of them, plus Kiryu's friend Haruka, enjoyed a nice and relaxing time together as they counted down the days until Yakuza 5. When Yakuza 5 came around, they all discussed starting ventures and other businesses. Being unable to separate themselves from their own businesses, Akiyama, Ryuji and Majima all cheered Haruka and Kiryu on from the sidelines as the two of them embarked on their own journeys in their new industries. Kiryu had become a taxi driver and Haruka had become a performer. Haruka was very bad at her job, so she flopped, but Kiryu was doing very well. Unfortunately, due to the rise in competition between the taxi industry and rideshare services such as Uber, Uber's CEO shot Kiryu in the stomach and then stole his car, so he had to walk home. Haruka fortunately managed to find him out on the street in the middle of literally nowhere despite having no way of knowing he was there, and there he collapsed on the brink of death. Haruka thought to ease his pain by reciting the story of a famous hero of Japan, Sakamoto Ryoma. Let me take you back to the year 1867, where the air was clean and the sky was- Haruka, shut up man, I haven't played Ishin yet. I don't want any spoilers. Then, Kiryu died. Dead for good this time, Kiryu rests in a peaceful afterlife. Nah, just kidding. Kiryu ended up getting revived by the ancient powers of the Dragon Engine in the game Yakuza 6. As we know, Kiryu shares an unbreakable bond with his closest friend, Goro Majima. The two of them, ever since their first encounter, have stood by each other every step of the way, ready to face whatever challenges they would meet together. So obviously Majima was cut out of Yakuza 6. Anyway, in order to show his thanks to the divine gods of the RGG studio development team for reviving him, Kiryu decided to go back to jail again for whatever reason. This time around he didn't become a pussy by serving a 10 year sentence, and instead was let back out after a relatively short time of like, 5 seconds if you skip the cutscenes. After being unbanned from Japan, Kiryu discovers that he has now become a granddad, and also Haruka's his daughter, sorry I forgot to mention that. But despite the fact that Kiryu and Haruka have spent many, many years together being in a very family-like bond, and Kiryu technically being Haruka's guardian for all of those years, so much so that he pretty much adopted her and is legally her father, Kiryu says, nah no no dad get fucked. Thankfully, Akiyama was paying a visit to Kiryu to discuss his finances with him, and after a very civil discussion between the two, Akiyama managed to convince Kiryu that he's being an idiot and that as far as the world is concerned, Kiryu is the father of Haruka. But unfortunately, this discourse came about because Haruka was put into a coma by a man named Toshihiro Nagoshi, and her son Haruto unfortunately had no one to care for him. But with his friends there to support him and his newfound determination to be a good role model for his grandson, Kiryu decided that he would put his silly past of dying like five times behind him. Kiryu decided that now would be the time to live a better life, to be a better person, to finally become the man that his family has always needed him to be. Anyway, then after a bit, Kiryu picked a fight with another CEO of Boats or something and then died. As sad as it is to see someone you love so dearly pass, we must accept the fact that Kiryu is no longer with us. You lived a good long life, Kazuma John Kiryu. I hope that you meet your fishy friend and that the two of you climb the waterfall together to become eternal dragons so that you may watch over your friends back on Earth and guide them towards a better life. He's in the next game. What? He's in the next game in the series. Do you mean like Judgment? I don't think he's in no, that No, he's in Yakuza 7. You know, like, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, well, Kiryu miraculously comes back to life, and what he ends up doing is contact... Read it. Are you serious? Read it. He contacts the chairman of the Omi Alliance. Kiryu has now been nerfed to become a side character, so he decides to meet with the new protagonist, Ichiban Kasuga. The two meet and they exchange a few words with each other. What the fuck? The two engage in a bit of fisticuffs, and after Ichiban wins the fight in gameplay and then loses the fight in the cutscene, because apparently this is Doom Blade 2, Kiryu steps to the sidelines to finally enjoy a peaceful life. Alright, good, finally got that over with. Oh my god. What the hell is Like a Dragon Gaiden? Are you serious? Okay, so it turns out there's going to be a spin off, yada yada. It shows what happens between Yakuza 6 and 7, but who cares? We all know what really happened is that Kiryu played golf and sang some karaoke songs. Whatever. Now Kiryu's story has come to an end. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, do whatever.
fuck is Like a Dragon 8? 